Hey everybody, welcome back around to the Blog and Grill. I am your host, Doug, here with your video blog for January 28, 2015. I have a great blog plan for you today as we're going to go inside the New York Sports Update as there's news on Deflategate. We'll also talk NBA action as we had a couple of good games last night. But right now I want to go inside the Super Bowl and I kind of want to get inside the matchups that we will see within this game on Sunday night. So first what I want to do is I want to just look at the offensive personnel of both teams and I think everybody's offensive personnel breakdown begins with the quarterback and I think when it comes to the quarterback clearly the New England Patriots have the advantage with Tom Brady but Russell Wilson is still a very capable quarterback who extends plays and can make things happen with his feet as well so that could be a big advantage for the Seattle Seahawks if the New England Patriots can get a pass rush going against this team. Um, Really moving on from there, note neither team has great wide receivers. We got Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse. We got um, on the other side, you got Danny Amendola. You got Brandon LaFell. But I think it comes down to two offensive players who are the best offensive players on their given team. And the first one has to be Marshawn Lynch of the Seattle Seahawks. He could be the best player in this game if it wasn't for the tight end of the Patriots, Rob Gronkowski. I think Gronkowski is probably the best player in this game, but I like the Seattle Seahawks on defense, which I'm going to get to in a minute, and I think they'll be able to slow him down. They have get, The Patriots have given up a lot of rushing yards throughout the year, so that's going to be something to watch with Marshawn Lynch. Now as we go to the defensive side of the ball, I think it gets interesting because I think it's going to be a unique opportunity because the, um, with the Seahawks, they don't rush a lot. They rush a lot of three. They do a lot of three-man rush and drop eight. They have very good safeties. Cam Chancellor, they have good defensive backs with Earl Thomas and Richard Sherman. I like the linebacker, K.J. Wright. They got some good players, okay? But they don't. I don't know if they're going to be able to put a lot of pressure on Tom Brady, and he might just be able to precision his way down the field and pick apart this defense. I think they could struggle to get it to... Gronkowski with K.J. Wright playing some of that linebacker position. I think he can hang with him. And I think you'll also see them put Cam Chancellor up occasionally to try to take away some short passes and really physical um, Rob Gronkowski. On the decent defensive side of the ball for the New England Patriots, they do an interesting thing where they don't where they put Rivas on the second receiver so they can double the first receiver. They got Brandon Browner. They got Patrick Chung. They got some very good players. They have a better pass rush, I think. They blitz more often with Chandler Jones and with Vince Wilfork, so that's going to be something to watch throughout this game. But they have Jamie Collins, the inside linebacker, who's very good. And just a lot of good opportunities for this team. So if we look at the special teams, I think... Both teams have very similar kickers. Steven Hauschka and Steven Gostowski are both very good kickers. I don't think the kicking game is going to be an issue. I think the special teams could be interesting because we've seen um, Seattle run some trick plays, and I think they could run some trick plays in this game and try to pick up some yards. So that's going to be interesting to see if we see some trick plays. Um, I think the punter um, for uh, New England is very good. His name is escaping me right now, but I think... That's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting how teams change field position as well, and that's what it's going to come down to. When it comes to coaching, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think Pete Carroll is right up there with Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is a great coach, and Pete Carroll is getting there. He knows how to coach his guys. That's the key for Pete Carroll. He understands his roster, understands the personalities on his team, and he can get it done with these guys. So it's going to be something to watch, and Belichick is just going to be able to adapt his game to what's going to work best to beat the Seattle Seahawks. And finally, when it comes down to the fan base, I think the Seattle Seahawks will have the majority of the fans there. Not a lot of fans like New England. Um, and with it being in Arizona, it's already on the West Coast. I think we'll see more Seattle fans than New England fans. And that could play a big factor is if Seattle could establish some form of a home field advantage in the Super Bowl. So we'll be back on uh, Saturday, and we're going to talk some more football, and I will give you my pick for the game, which right now stands at a minus one for New England. So New England's a minus one, um, and that could just basically be quarterback play right there. All right, let's talk a little NBA action. Of course, last night we had some great games. The Bulls take down the Warriors, and really a big win, I think, for the Chicago Bulls moving forward. I think they really needed to have a game where they could show that they can win um, against a very good team. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Derrick Rose hit a big shot. We'll see if Chicago can get healthy. I think they can make a run at this 
um, Eastern Conference, which is very, very wide open right now. And in the other game, the Cavaliers won their seventh in a row, and now with LeBron back, kind of everything's starting to calm down, and he's starting to get it going, and they've won seven straight, and they are currently 26-20 and 20 right now, and they're up to fifth place in that Eastern Conference. They would match up with Chicago right now if the playoffs were to start today. And the Atlanta Hawks, I mean, they just keep rolling at 37-8. and eight. They've won 16 in a row, outscoring opponents by an average of 7.3 points per game. They're just ripping it apart right now. So, yeah, the standings look like Atlanta at the top. Then we got Washington, Toronto, 2-3, and three. Chicago, 4, Cleveland, 5, Milwaukee, 6, Miami, 7, Charlotte, 8, and Brooklyn and Boston are just on the outside looking in in the Eastern Conference. And then out west, we have the Golden State Warriors at 36 and 7. And then we got Memphis 2, Portland 3, Clip Show 4, Houston 5, Dallas 6, San Antonio 7, and Phoenix right now in the 8th spot with New Orleans and OKC just on the outside looking in. Kevin Durant, of course, will miss his second straight game tonight as they take on the Knicks. Time for your New York sports update. An investigator from the NFL, Ted Wells, will be calling on the Columbia the Columbia University Department of Physics to analyze a ball to analyze ball inflation okay and this just puts up a lot of warning flags for me I think this shows that they don't really have a case at this point and they're going to try to make a case by going out and getting experts to come in and basically try to find the smallest flaw that will incriminate the New England Patriots New York Knicks re-signed Langston Galloway. He was on two 10-day contracts. They signed him through 2016. 12 points, 3 assists, and 4 rebounds. He's shooting 43% from the field. And J.R. Smith comes out and says New York nightlife um, threw him off his game. Okay, So he comes out after leaving New York and says the New York nightlife threw off his game. If that's the case, he should be dropping 30 every night in Cleveland because Cleveland has no and or negative nightlife okay no nightlife in Cleveland sorry LeBron but JR should be playing a lot better for you all right coming up Saturday we'll pick the Super Bowl we'll also talk college hoops and some headlines check me out on sportsmindednews.com my man James Williams JHW reporter you can follow him on Twitter also follow me on Twitter at Yankee Baller 415 that is Yankee Baller 415. You can comment, question, subscribe to my page. Thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Grill. I will be back on Saturday. Have a great rest of the week.